Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, this is a surprising bill, uh, Bill 18, an act to amend the New Brunswick Museum Act, Mr. Speaker. Uh, it's, it's a little bit like, it's a little like suggesting that the board of a public library should be in charge of uh, building a new library, uh, Mr. Speaker. So what's underlying this? What, what's, what's brought this about? I, I don't understand, and, and the minister in, in, her, in the speech did not provide any rationale again for, uh, for this bill. Um, th this raises all kinds of concerns. Now, as far as the speed at which, you know, this, this kind of worry about the speed at which the museum building is going to get built, there was already a plan for a museum building on the waterfront in St. John Harbor uh, to house the, the Provincial Museum, uh, its collections and exhibits, uh, Mr. Speaker. Uh, it was fairly far along, and uh, it, was, it was, you know, by now, where are we, 2022? We'd be close to it being opening by now. But, uh, Mr. Speaker, the Premier canceled, canceled that uh, effort, um, canceled that location, canceled the design, canceled the whole darn thing. And then stood by while the board shut down uh, the Market Square location for no good reason that couldn't have been addressed, Madam Mr. Speaker. It couldn't have been addressed. So there actually is no open museum for New Brunswickers to, to visit. So why did the Premier, you know, throw the spanner in the works and, and shut down the momentum to building the museum? Like I said, the site was identified, the plans were being developed. Uh, the, the budget had been prepared. Uh, well, Mr. Speaker, perhaps Mr. Irving didn't think it was a good idea to have a museum on the waterfront. Perhaps, perhaps Mr. Irving, Mr. Irving believes that the waterfront should only be for working Order. businesses that earn re that earn incomes, Mr. Speaker, that make profits on the waterfront. Perhaps that's the reason, Mr. Speaker, that that Mr. Irving didn't want the Provincial Museum on the harbour front of St. John. Order, members. So, Mr. Speaker, here we are. Now, the ball is being thrown to the board in this bill. So one has to ask, is the makeup of the board even appropriate for taking on such a project? Is there anyone on this board who has any ability to provide the kind of governance that would be needed for a major building project. In fact, is this board constructed in a way that reflects all of New Brunswick? And the answer is no, Mr. Speaker. No. If you look at the board, seven out of the 11 members are from the St. John and Fredericton areas. Seven out of the 11 members are from the St. John and Fredericton areas. There's no one on the board uh, from the Peninsula Acadia, but there is no one Order, Minister. from the Chaleur region. There is nowhere from the Madawaska. So uh, you have one person from St. Quentin, one person from St. Quentin, one person from the Miramichi. This is not representative of New, of New Brunswick for a provincial museum. I, and I'm not saying these aren't good people. They're all good people. I know some of the board members, in fact. They're good people, Mr. Speaker. But the problem is the Museum Act as it stands, and here is the perfect opportunity to fix this problem, doesn't say anything about the, 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 the makeup of the board in the Museum Act. It doesn't set out any specifications to ensure that the board of the Provincial Museum reflects the province so that the board members can reflect all corners of the province to the activities of the Provincial Museum, Mr. Speaker. So there's work. Well, lots of work to be done there. But now, this board, all good people, who uh, I'm sure were chosen because of their <coughs> governance experience, because of their particular uh, expertise around museum collections, perhaps, uh, now they're going to be handed the ball for, for a, a big capital project. Um, and that's required to, to in this bill to include uh, provisions around immunity, and prosecution, and proceedings and indemnity um, to protect those, those board members who didn't sign up for this, Mr. Speaker, I'm sure. Uh, so 
Are we going to say resignations from the board? I don't know. But currently there isn't even, as far as I know, uh, a permanent executive director or CEO for the museum. So, so it's, a, it's a bit of a mess, uh, the way I look at it. They, uh, they've had to put all their collections in storage. All the exhibits have been torn down. Even the whale got transported to, to Lancaster or somewhere for safekeeping. Madam Speaker, there, there, <laughs> there's no place for, for students from, from children from around this province now to go to, to, to be immersed in New Brunswick's natural history, its cultural history uh, from, a, from a provincial perspective that captures the fullness of, uh, of what New Brunswick is. And, uh, and here we are. The board is getting handed this this uh, unwelcome gift, I'm, sh I'm sure. So um, I, I don't believe this is going to lead to a speedier uh, process for, for getting a new building up and running. Um, I'm sure Mr. Irving has his proposals that he's made, and I don't know whether it's something the board is open to or not uh, on the museum. Uh, but you know, he shouldn't be he shouldn't be interfering with this process at all. So, Mr. Speaker, um, I don't. I, 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 I'm just a bit gobsmacked by this bill. I must say, gobsmacked. So, so with no rationale, with no rationale provided by the minister for this, all the concerns that this bill raises, Mr. Speaker. Second reading, we're called to determine when we vote whether, in principle, we agree with this. And in principle, I disagree with this. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.